Coming to you from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, by way of Stone Mountain, Georgia, birthed by the great state of South Carolina, is the Bryant Land Country Podcast, your place for any and everything in hunting, fishing, sports, and outdoor related, with heavy doses of randomness, guests, and an all-around good time. Here's your host, proud Gamecock, South Carolina Forever, AB3. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of the Bryant Land Country Podcast. I hope you guys had a merry Christmas. Hope you got all the gifts you want. Hope you got a chance to spend time with your families. Me personally, it was the first time I had a chance to spend Christmas at home. Didn't have to fly out anywhere. Didn't fly in late or fly out, you know, immediately Uh, Christmas night or anything like that. I got a chance to enjoy being at home, being with the kids, uh, and spending Christmas with them. Here we are, though, last podcast of 2019, and this has been a really, really awesome experience to go through all these podcasts this year, and I'm looking forward to uh, more podcasting, more interviews, more talking, uh, next year, we're going to have a couple of changes to the show. The format will still be the same. I'll bring you the best interviews uh, from interesting people that are doing interesting things out here in the outdoors, hunting, fishing, ATV riding, things like that. But we'll have some changes, some stuff that um, you'll see a little bit differently next year on the podcast. And of course, you know, next year... Lord willing, the book will be done, and I'll have the book out uh, for you guys to pick up. So a little bit of different things coming in 2020. I am not a big New Year's resolution guy. I'm not a guy that's, oh, my God, it's a new year. You got to start over, or it's the end of the decade. Oh, my goodness. Like, you know, calendar keeps turning. Uh, These years and days keep adding up. But as far as uh, OAB3, you know, I just keep turning along keep going as long as I can. But anyway, enough of that foolishness today. We have a great show. I got a chance to talk to a young woman who is making her mark, uh, growing in her hunting skills every chance she goes out. And she tells a few good stories about just building herself uh, as a young woman, as a huntress out here. I'm talking about Sydney Marsh. Uh, Sydney was home from college on college break and i know we've wanted to uh link up here for a bit uh, and just talk to an outstanding young lady uh getting ready to graduate from college like i said she's got her academics right but she also enjoys hunting so uh sydney marsh is my guest this week if you Hadn't guessed it. Yes, she is part of the uh, Hunting with the Marshes family. Uh, she's Antonio Marsh's daughter. Um, and like I said, Sydney is doing it out here. So I got a chance to talk to her. So I'm going to fall back, hit uh, hit this old record button here. You guys take a gander, take a listen to my conversation with Sydney Marsh on the Brian Land Country Podcast. Brian Land. All right, so like I was saying, I I recorded or I started recording this early, and the uh, batteries decided that they didn't want to um, work today. So I apologize, uh, Sydney, for the interruption. But what I was saying before I was so rudely interrupted by my batteries was that most people start, you know, with squirrels, they rabbits, coons, maybe, you know, with a little twenty two or BB rifle or whatever. But being you are the daughter of a proud military veteran, you basically took a full-blown rifle and skipped all of that and have proceeded to knock out two hogs and a very nice buck in a very short time. Let's start from the beginning, Sydney. How did you well first of all welcome i'm so bad about this i always want to just jump into welcome to the podcast welcome to the show thank you for joining me sydney sorry about that thank you for having me (laughs) so i'd be so excited i just want to get into to the story because i find this stuff so fascinating how did you get started 
Like, was it something that you saw your dad doing or was it something that he kind of dragged you along and say, hey, you need to come do this or let's spend some time together? How did it all really get started for you? I want to say he started going with my mom's co-worker first, and then he started going out in Camden. And so he would come home in his camo, and I'd be like, well, where are you going? You know, I want to go. <laughs> so I started off, we used to go to the range. So I, I had experience with handguns. And then finally, he was like, okay, you can go. So he got me, I call it my outfit. <laughs> and then he got me a 22, and we would go sit in the blind. Mm-hmm. And I was supposed to start squirrel hunting. But it seemed like every time we went, the squirrels would never be there. Right. So yeah. he got me a little target I could just shoot at for a little bit, and then we would just go on home. Now, and how <laughs> old are you, how old were you when this started? I want to say twenty nineteen. Okay, so you were had already graduated high school, so it was in in college. I can relate to the squirrel hunting thing because whenever I'm out at my place, just kind of, you know, doing stuff, hanging out or, you know, doing some work on the property or whatever, I never see squirrels. But when deer season starts, it's like every squirrel in the property comes out and just starts making noise and ruffling and kicking leaves and stuff. So I totally can relate to you on the squirrel thing. So you got... Like so you guys got started, got your rifle, you started out with a twenty two. What was the first rifle that you have? Or what did, do you still have that, the rifle that you used um for your deer and your hog hunt? Um, for the hog hunt, the first two hog hunts, I used the Ruger seven millimeter O eight. Okay. It was just with the first hog hunt, that was interesting because, well, before we even got to the hog hunts, before we even started really getting a hunt, I would go hunting for my good sleep. <laughs> I would always get me a good napping in the stand. <laughs> and it, wouldn't be, it wouldn't be like, you know, just close my eyes. It would be like a snore sleep. And my dad would be like, wake up. <laughs> <laughs> but is that, is, that's basically just because, you know, there it, it, it wasn't a lot going on, right? It was just, you know, it, it was really cool really chill environment it's easy to fall asleep and in the beginning i was like oh my goodness when when are the deer going to come i feel like if we have the corn in the feeder they should be coming every time we go right so it <laughs> took me some a while to get into the fact that you have to wait so with my first hog we we got out there it was an evening hunt so we got out there maybe four or five o'clock and we were just waiting and waiting and waiting and nothing came mm-hmm. just kept waiting kept waiting kept waiting and then the sun starts going down and my dad's like okay well you know what we can just go ahead and go I said okay that's fine you know it's dark I'm thinking the hogs aren't coming anyway so we're sitting there and I go bad, bad. the hogs are back and he's like what I said the hogs they're back he said you can see them through the scope and I said yeah and he was like well if you feel like you got a good shot go ahead and take it so this is my first time shooting anything Mm -hmm. so i'm like okay well he said shoot it so i'm just like try to pinpoint it on the shoulder and just pull it right so i i pulled the trigger and then i tried to look up um, above from the scope to see where the hog went and i was like uh well it's not down there but i think i think it ran this way my dad's like well you gotta be sure you gotta be sure and i said well i mean it's kind of hard to see it through the scope but i'm pretty sure it went that way so he's like, okay, well, let's give it a few moments, and then, you know, we'll get out and go look. So it's dark, and I'm like, well, I don't see it out on the plot, so let's just go home. Like, we're going to look. We're going to look. And I'm like, I don't see it, so I'm pretty sure I didn't hit it. He's like, well, do you think you hit it? And I said, yeah, I think I hit it because once I shot it, it kind of stopped, like hesitated, and then it ran off. And so with that hunt, I was like, okay, so for any of these next hunts, I need to pay attention to where the hog went. So we're out there looking, looking, looking. I'm texting my brother. I think I got it, but I'm not sure. So he calls out Mr. JP. Finally, after we had probably looked for maybe 30, 45 minutes, okay. Mr. J- Mr. JP comes out and it might have been 10 minutes. And he's like, I smell it. I'm like, you smell it? I said, Dad, do you smell it? Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no. And so Mr. JP's like, I see blood. I see blood. And then he walks up on it. And he's like, I got it. I got it. And I'm jumping up and down like I won the lottery. 
that finally, they're able to pull it out because my first hunt, my first real hunt, I said, I'm not going in those woods. <laughs> So you were still, you were still a little, a little bit timid as far as like the entire process, as far as like right. you know going in and in the thicket and dragging them out and stuff. You you really weren't ready for that part of it. Yeah, I was just ready to take the pictures, take it to the processor, and then we go home. <laughs> so they finally dragged it out, and I'm getting my pictures. Okay, and I'm smiling like, oh my gosh, I finally got one. Now, where did you hit? So, did you end up hitting it in the in the shoulder? I want to say I I hit it in the leg, so it didn't really affect it too much. Okay. It was a bad shot. I'll say that. Okay, but you for it for them to find it and for it to expire, so it's probably like a little a little lower down, and then like you said, part of the leg. Yeah, it probably just like blew out the back leg a little bit, so it it still could have ran on the other three legs. Gotcha. It was gotcha. a lesson learned, and then finally we we um load the hog up. You know, I'm in the car like, all right, okay, I'm kind of liking this. <laughs> I like so, so we get. To, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh no, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. So we um load the hog up, get in the car, and we're heading to the processor. And I'm like, yeah, I did that right, Dad. And he's like, yeah, that's good. Good job. So we get to the processor, and um, the man was like, you know, who got this? And I was like, me. So me being a girl, I had my nails done. I had pink glitter nails. <laughs> and he was like, you really shot this with these long pink glitter nails. I said, yeah, that was me. So then we're spraying off the tart that we covered the hog in, and I'm still smiling, happy, mouth open. And I said, dad, the blood water got in my mouth. <laughs> He said, what? I said, the water got in my mouth. I could have thrown up. It was the most disgusting thing. I said, okay, now see, I was cool and everything in the beginning, but this house going to be, uh, we can cancel this. <laughs> it is so funny to me how you still, you know, like a girly girl the first time through, and but also just ecstatic. You know, because you made the shot and you got a kill. And that was your, was that, that wasn't the very first time you went, but it, that was just, that was your first hog that you got, right? Right. That's my first actual kill, my first productive point. Okay. Okay. So were you, would you say you was hooked after that? Mm, I would say, say so because I am an animal person and just like the touching the hogs and dragging it and just seeing, wow, you actually took the time out to sit in the stand and take this hog down and knowing that whenever we get home and get it processed and everything that I can say, you know, yeah, I killed this. Yeah, it, it, is, a pro, it is a very good feeling uh, when you come through on a productive hunt like that. And then, like you say, to get it, once you get everything taken care of and get it to the table, you know, it, it's a very good feeling, feeling of accomplishment to know it's just like, okay, I, you know, I, I killed that, you know, I was able to provide this for my family. So, all right, so that was the first one. When, and when was this, when you took the first one? Uh, I want to say it was September. It was around the time that South Carolina had that flood. Okay. So oh, wow. September, October. Yep. Yep. So I remember coming home and my mom was like, so how'd it go? I was like, I finally got it, mom. I finally got it. <laughs> so you were you were all swelled up with pride, which is obviously an awesome thing. So you go back to school, right, after that. Mm -hmm. And then you come back and you go on a second hog hunt. Now, was this like within the same time frame or was this like after a year or so? Or? I want to say it had, I would say probably about a year. A okay. little over a year. Okay. It was the summertime. Summertime. Okay. So nice. So you, so you overcome the heat because September is still, you know, it, it's not a comfortable time to be outside in South Carolina. So... You overcome, you know, the heat, the floods and stuff on your first hunt. Now, how did the second one go? The second hunt, the second hunt was great. I felt like, you know, I had a little more, a little more experience under my belt. And me and my dad, you know, sitting in the stand. Before, every time I'm going hunting, I know, like, I'm pretty sure that I'm going to see something. My nerves are just 
all over the place and I just don't know how to compose myself. And so we're sitting there and then, you know, the last time I didn't really see the hogs come in because it was kind of dark, but this time the hogs, they come running in. I'm like, oh goodness, like there they are. So <laughs> they're all under the feeder. And for me personally, when I see it, I'm like, okay, let's just go ahead and shoot. And my dad's like, take your time, like let it get comfortable, just relax. Right. And I'm like, we don't have time for relaxing. We got to shoot it. So the hogs <laughs> come in on the plot. And I try to find the biggest one I can find through the scope. And I'll try to let it eat a little bit, let it eat. And then I'm like, you know what? This is too much weight and just shoot it. So I shoot it and it drops. And I'm like, uh, okay, I so got another one. Is it, and it just dropped right there. So no tracking, no netting this time. No, and this shot was much better. I hit it in the shoulder on the, like the shoulder kind of near the ear, that area. Yep. And it dropped right where it was. And I said, he was like, did you get it? And I was like, yeah. We don't have to go looking for it this time. So me, I'm like, once I shoot it, I'm like, okay, let's go out there and get it and so we can go. And he's like, no, just give it a little time just to be sure. Right. You... So we get down, get down um, out the stand. And I'm like, all right, okay, this one, this one's pretty big. So we're walking up on it. And I was like, wow. The first one to me was kind of small. But this one, you can tell it had a lot more meat on its bones. Mm-hmm. So it makes me more excited. I'm like, okay, I'm getting bigger and bigger each time. Man, see, the patience thing, that was something that I had to work at. And it's funny, I have more patience hunting than I do with anything else or any other aspect in my life. But, I mean, he's right. Like, you, you know, you're a lot more successful if you're patient. You let that animal get comfortable you know, it's just like, all right, this is a safe environment. We're good. We're chill here, especially deer. You know, when deer come in, you know, they're always kind of like looking around. They're already skittish and, you know, spooky little animals. So you let them come in. They look around. And it's like, hey, it's all good here. It's just like, all right, come on in, guys. And then they come in and, you know, and they start feeding and stuff. And then you wait you know, for that perfect shot, uh, hopefully the perfect shot comes. But you just wait and let them get comfortable. Same thing after you make the shot. You may know that, you know, that was a great shot and that animal is down and stuff, but you just, you can't be too careful when messing around with wild animals, man. And right. it, you just, you never know. Like, I've watched deer, you know, I've hit them, watched them drop, and, you know, you get so excited because you're like, okay, they're down, they're down. I took a deer a few weeks ago, and I saw her go down. I saw her stand back up, and I saw her go down. And I was talking to your dad, and I was just like, you know, I'm going to give it a little bit more a little bit more time. Because I did. I wanted to come down and be like, all right, make sure, you know, you ain't going to run. You ain't going to get away. But, man, after, especially, too, I don't know if you saw, there was an article about a, a guy that was deer hunting, and... They got up or they got down, went to go look at the deer and ended up getting mauled because the deer oh. wasn't dead yet. So he basically, yeah. the deer popped up and just, you know, kicking him all in the face. And I think he got hooked like with an antler or whatever to the rib and that pretty much took him out. So you can't be too careful. You know, you just got to, like you say, have the patience, let them you know, do their thing and ease on down and then go on out there and get them. Because if you got them, especially if you got them really good, they ain't going nowhere. Just just give them a little bit of time, a little breathing room. So And, and see, my dad, I'm a hunter, but I would say at this point, you know, I'm still a girly hunter. So, you know, I like animals and I killed it, so I don't really want to touch them too much. <laughs> so with the first call, my dad and the Miller, you know, they carried it out and laid it out, and I just got to stand by, you know, okay, I killed it, took my pictures and go. But this hog, he was like, you know, uh, all right, go ahead and get it. I said, what do you mean, get it? <laughs> he was like, drag it? I said, like, like touch it and drag it? So I, before I touched it, I had to, wait like, you know. Wait a minute, wait, 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 <laughs> wait a minute. Did you say, like, <laughs> touch it and drag it? Yeah, so but he, I was like, okay, I guess I got email. It's, it's wow. Coming. So I was kicking it and tapping that. So let's be sure, sure it's dead before I, before I touch it. So I 
again, you know, I have my nails done. So I'm like, okay, let's just do it. So I, I grabbed it. I said, okay, all right, this is not too bad. And I got the dragon. And I said, okay, this thing's a little heavy. So he said, you need some help? I said, yeah, that would be great. <laughs> and even getting it on the back of the truck, I'm like, thank the Lord you're here. Because if it was up to me, just let's come on, let's just go home. Because I can't get this big old thing on the back of the truck. Yeah, it, it's funny, though, because I think the story would go a little bit different if it was like your brother or whatever. And from the standpoint of if he was kind of skittish about getting into, you know, the dragon and, you know, the basically the heavy work, the heavy lifting. Because <laughs> once you kill an animal, that's when the quote unquote the fun starts. <laughs> You know, you got to get that thing out of there, get it processed or, you know, get it to the process or get it where you can process it. You know, if you're one of those DIY folks, but with you being the baby girl, it, it seems like he, he's exhibited a little bit more patience with you and not just thrown you into the uh, into the fire. Would you say that that would be the case? I would say so. I think he's proud that, you know, all right, she got a kill. Now we're going to have a little patience with the with the whole recovery process. <laughs> and that's fine with me. We're going to make this teamwork. Okay. Okay. So now this, like, so by this point, it, it's basically your building block. So you went, you didn't see anything, you didn't see anything. You kind of see how this goes. Like every time you go out, you don't see something. Second time you go you know, you get a shot down on a nice hog, got to do a little uh, tracking or whatnot, get your club manager come out, help you guys out and get it out of there. You still hadn't touched it yet, which is amazing <laughs> to me. But, you know, hey, you know, everybody teach their own. So now you get the second hog down and you drag it out. You help them load it up as well? I did help, but he always says, okay, before we even get the loading, he says, which end do you want? And I say, I'll take the back because I don't want it staring at me. <laughs> okay. So I always take the rear end and he gets the head and I go, okay, on three. Because, Lordy, that is a workout in itself. Well, usually, and I could be wrong, but in my experience, once you get the head, everything else kind of follows because the head is the usually the heaviest part. And if you can get the head in, then the rest of the body will kind of just flop its way on in. So it's kind of, I get it. it it's very strategic uh, on your part of going <laughs> to the, uh, to the back. So I'll, I'll, I'll give you that one. So now when y'all get to the processor, last time you got, you know, you had the uh, blood water, as you say, in your mouth. Did Were you able to avoid? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to keep it together here because I'm really enjoying this. I, I, I'm enjoying the process because my daughter is, is the complete opposite. Now, she won't have anything to do with it. She won't go hunting. She, she will fish, and to her credit, she will bait her own hooks with live bait when we're catfishing. She'll, you know, use the uh, livers and stuff and get her hand all in the bloody livers and bait her hook, worms, you know, night uh, crawlers, whatever the whole deal. But when it comes to hunting, she wants no part of it. So it, it's funny to me just how, you know, like you're out there, and like you say, you got your outfit, which is so cute to me. <laughs> and, and, you know, you're out there, you're spending quality time with your dad, but you also, there's very, you know, girly, girly part about you. It's like, okay, baby steps, baby steps. So <laughs> I, that that's why I'm, I'm laughing. Like, I, I'm really enjoying this. So you avoided the blood water this time. Absolutely. You were saying your daughter, she likes to go fishing. See, when I first started fishing, when I tell you I am absolutely terrified of bugs, and with fishing, you have to use a worm. <laughs> Worms, crickets, <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, when we would first go, i say, Dad, you know, the fish ate my worm. I need you to put another one on there. And he, after a while, he said, you know what? If you want to come out here and fish, you're going to do it yourself. So that first time, you know, I was like, okay, well, fine. I guess I'm just going to have to sit here. <laughs> and then I got kind of bored and I said well I guess it's time to give it a shot so I'm over there like <laughs> trying to put the worm on the hook 
Now, hunting to me is a breeze. You can keep the bugs and the flies and everything. That's so funny to me. Because I, I, I don't know. I guess, like, when, you know, you go on a successful hunt, you know, you can... I don't know. That's an interesting perspective. That's the, I have to think about that one. That's an interesting <laughs> perspective because to me it seems like, you know, like you say, with the blood and getting it out and the tracking and stuff, fish, you know, you once you get the fish, you know, you get the bait on, you get it in the water, and then if you hook them, you get the net, take them off the hook, throw them in the bucket, and all's right with the world. So, I don't know. That's, it. that's, that's an interesting perspective. So, but back to okay, so let's get back to this hog, the second hog here. So, y'all get to the processor. What's the what, what's the the uh, outcome this time? Like, are you a little bit more hands on? You know, getting it unloaded and all that stuff. Or are you still kind of like in the corner, smiling and taking <laughs> pictures and sending selfies and Snapchat? <laughs> At this point, I wanted to say I'm a little more hands on. I did help get it, you know, get on the back of the truck and not the process. We just gonna drag it off the back of the truck and drag it on inside and, you know, let it be. Right. But there was no there was no blood in the mouth this time. It was a nice smooth drop off. <laughs> Got our um put our what we mom tags and we were able to go on home in peace. <laughs> go home in peace. Nice. Nice. Now before we get to the big boy, or you know the the reason why some of us you know hunt and get out in the field because you I've seen the pictures of this buck um, and it is absolutely awesome. Um, but before we get into that, what is your like at school and stuff? Do you have a lot of other friends that hunt? Like a lot of you know other homegirls or whatever that hunt, or you know people that you talk to about it, or is this something that most people would be, you know, very surprised to know about you? So, you know, I go to USC again, and personally, I feel like it's a predominantly white school. So I remember and I, was, I had one class, and my teacher, he hunted. So he was talking about hunting, and I went into class to, and went to his office to talk about a paper, and I said, you know, I hunt. And he said, you do what? I said, I hunt. So we start talking about that, and I feel like, you know, me saying that I hunt, I was able to get me a nice A in that class. He was like, okay, this is, this is pretty cool. <laughs> and then um, also I was lucky to go to a school where they have kitchens in the dorms. So I don't have to. I didn't get stuck with the nasty dorm food. So I'll go home, get me some hog, and get to the dorm and fry it up or bake it or whatever I have to do to get me a nice meal. Nice. Nice. Now, how how does now do you have a roommate or are you in your own uh your own dorm room? So it was like sweet sweet styles where it has two rooms and two people in each room. My roommate, she'll be like, You eat hog and I'm like, Yeah, they're <laughs> gonna try some too. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you know how you get like bacon from like the store. Well, this bacon didn't come from the store. Like you, just, that's how you should have presented it to her. Cause it, it's always funny to me. People will be like, "Oh, you eat that?" You know, I'm like, you know, you eat that too, right? Except I, <laughs> I know where mine came from. When you know yours is still kind of questionable, but that's the same thing again. Back to my daughter, won't have anything to do with the process, won't go hunting, anything like that, but has yet to turn down her plate when <laughs> stuff is done, whether it's, you know, sausage, uh, stuffed shells, you know, burgers, whatever the case is, whatever I end up making, her plate seems to find a way over to it. And, oh, this is good. This is good. It's like, mm -hmm, yep, uh-huh, I know. So... <laughs> All right, well, that's good. That's good. Because I, I always kind of wonder, you know, with you being in a college atmosphere and then being, um, like you said, going to USC Aiken, I'm familiar with, you know, what it's like down there in Aiken and stuff. But I was just kind of curious, you know, like if your friends, you know, they're talking about, you know, whatever, Beyonce and Jay-Z or, you know, the baby or whatever the hell they're, you know, they're <laughs> talking about. And you're like, yeah, I'm sitting in the stand and, I just killed the biggest buck of my life so far. So it's like that, that conversation, as y'all like to say, the conversation hits different. Uh, my friends who like who are black females, you know, I say, oh, yeah, I hunt. They're like, oh, my God, you really hunt? And I'm like, yeah. 
And they're like, can y'all take me? Can y'all take me, please? And I'm like, okay. You know, now I'm like, now you can't be out there being a girly girl now. You got to, you got Ooh, to get in Ooh, <laughs> so you out there living that hypocrite life. Yeah, I'm Talk like, about- now, <laughs> I'm like, you got to, you know, you got to get in there. <laughs> you got to get the blood water in your mouth, girl. Like, I, <laughs> that is funny. Because I, I get that, too. I was telling somebody the other day. It was like, I almost, like, get to the point where I don't want to post, like, stuff that I kill. Because it, it, it comes back to two things. One to see like, oh, can you bring me some meat? Can you bring me some meat? <laughs> or it's like, well, I want to go, I want to go, I want to go, which is fine. I don't discourage people, you know, from wanting to get in this thing and, you know, learn more about it and all this stuff. But, man, people don't understand there is a lot of work that goes into this. And a lot of people just want to show up on the back end with a plate or they just want to be like, well, I want to go, I want to go, but... They don't know the work that goes into it on the summer, in the summertime, in the heat, when you scouting and filling feeders and planting plots and, like, all this other stuff. All y'all see is just, like, the good stuff on the back end. I'm going to start posting pictures on hunts where I don't see nothing, just me (laughs) and the squirrels. Or, you know, you don't have, you know, anything that happened and stuff, so... But I don't know. It, it, it's one of those things that's always, it's another one of those things that I just find interesting because people, either they're just like, oh, my God, I can't believe you do that. And then you turn into, like, Rambo anytime <laughs> they talk about you. It's like, oh, he's he's a certified killer. She's a certified killer. Da, 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 da. And it's just like, you know, just out enjoying, you know, the woods, enjoying nature, being out there. So it, it people's perspectives of how they look at us is, like I said, it's just one of those things that's just kind of amazing to me. And I wish I could be the person where I just come in on the back end and just go for the hunt. But, you know, Mr. Antonio Marsh is not having that. I was about to say, I I know who your daddy is. That ain't going (laughs) to happen. That is not going to happen. Got to go fill fill the feeder. And I'm like, I'm going to pick up that bag of corn. Wow. So you that bag of corn is, to me, it's heavy. And then I got to get it almost over my head just to pour it into the feeder. How tall are you? About five eight, five eight and a half. Oh man, you make it sound like you little itty bitty, five two or whatever. Five that's plenty of height to just hoist that little old thirty pound bag, thirty five pound bag of corn into the feeder. That's nothing. Come on. Then we have to lug it from the truck. To the feeder. Then once we get to the feeder, we gotta <laughs> figure out how to get the bag open because to me, getting those corn bags open is hard. I'm like, I'm tearing this little red strip and it's not opening. You I think your dad might be playing a joke on you because the only thing you gotta do is just take a knife and slit the bag. But see, sometimes, you know, I think he want me to get, you know, the heart of hunting. <laughs> put in a little extra work and I'm like come on dad I think you got to do is take a friggin pocket knife <laughs> and slide it and slit the back open and pour it <laughs> I'm gonna talk to him about that cause he <laughs> I think he, he kind of tried to make it a little bit harder than it need to be. Yeah the only thing he needs is a pocket knife and slit it and pour it in there but and I'll uh, and I will say though I think you're embellishing a little bit about the 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 distance from the truck to the feeder. I I've been to y'all's hunting areas, <laughs> and that, that is not what I would call distance at all. <laughs> just so just so you know, I, I I got your back on most things. You know, like they they leaving you out there to open to tear the bag open with your bare hands and not giving you a knife and all that stuff. I I got your back on a lot of things, but the distance. Mm, <laughs> Nah, the distance ain't it, it ain't that far. So, but it's all good. I, like I said, you you out there, you are getting it done, and I I know I am very very happy for you. So, now the big boy, tell me how this went down because this is. And correct me if I'm wrong, but this is one that where everything that your dad had been preaching and teaching to you and talking to you about, this was kind of where all you put all those things together 
and the results was your first buck and a very nice one at that. Am I right or wrong? You are correct. It was, I can't put a specific word on it, but it was uh, an amazing experience to have. I know I hadn't, I probably hadn't hunted in, I'll say, a year, maybe a year and a half. It had been a while. So in my head, I'm like, okay, I'm trying to go back through everything that I have done recently learned and I'm like okay so and then my dad will tell you sometimes when I know I'm about to hunt I'll have dreams about hunting so in my dreams I'll be going through the steps you know I look up like dad I got a, I got a nice buck in my sleep last night so this must be a sign <laughs> nice so we got up that morning you know I'm putting on my pink camo getting my outfit together I'm like okay you know when you look good you feel good so, you know, I got my camo on, got my dash of pink on there, and we get in the stand. And I know this time we were walking in, it's dark, it's cold. We usually use the um the white light. Yep. And I know I saw my dad, he switched his light to red. So I'm like, okay, well, let me switch mine too. <laughs> so we're walking in, and I'm like, oh, this is way better than the white light. I said, I can actually see now. So, let me, real quick, uh, before you continue. I was the one that had to put your dad onto the red light because he was talking about the white light, and I was just like, <laughs> "Get get the red." I said, "Get the red light." And they won't. I said, "You'll be able to see better, and they won't. You'll have less chance of spooking the deer." So just, I just wanted to throw that in there. He might tell you different, but that's the truth. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm looking. At it. <laughs> like, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all got the red lights. Y'all getting in, getting settled. Oh, so actually we're walking in and, you know, my dad has that camera where it'll send a notification to your phone. Yep. So we're walking in. He's like, Sid, you know, I'm sorry, but it's a buck in there now. So we just got to, you know, take it extra slow to so walking in. In my head, I'm like, Lord, please don't let this buck run out on us now because I don't know what I'm going to do. So we're walking in and finally, you know, it clears out where I can get into the stand. So I get in the stand. And another thing, I'm glad it's cold because that means there's no bugs. <laughs> you so are dedicated the- to this girly girly life i i give yes, you an a I- for effort <laughs> <laughs> so i get into the stand i get situated and then you know he walks off so you know i'm used to the sitting there by myself in the dark now so i'm just chilling and i hear a bunch of noise i'm like i never hear this much rustling in the leaves when I'm in here, so I'm like, oh, my God, the deer going to come out while I'm sitting here in the dark and I can't see it. So I'm sitting there, and finally that crack of light where I see the birds chirping, I'm like, yes, I made it. And then the feeder goes off, and every time the feeder goes off, it gets me. So I'm in there jumping. I'm like, Dad, it got me again. <laughs> so, <laughs> the timer the timer, and the, and the clink when it goes off, and it, yeah, I there been a couple of times in broad daylight, like three o'clock in the afternoon, that thing would go off and I'm just like, Whoa, what's that? And yeah, so <laughs> I'm with you on that one. And he'll say, Sid, the feeder goes off at six, be ready. And six o'clock comes every time. And I'm like, he just told me it's about to go. <laughs> so I'm sitting there and finally, you know, light cracks, the birds are flying around. I'm like, okay, all right, it's looking good. And I keep hearing this rustling. To my left. And I'm like, okay, if you're going to come, please just come on and come out now so we can go ahead and get this thing over with. So finally, I'm sitting there, my head's on swivel. I'm looking like, okay, you know, make sure I'm watching. And I finally just relax. I'm like, okay, whatever. It's just not going to come. So I'm sitting there and I see the deer try to cross the road. I said, <gasps> so I freeze. I'm like, okay, don't breathe. Don't move. <laughs> just, just sit here. So it's, it walked across the road and it stopped. And I tell you, this deer turned and looked me dead in the eye. I said, oh, great. Perfect. I said, it's about to run off, and I'm not going to get to shoot it. So it's looking at me. I'm looking at it. And finally, he turned his head back around and kept going across the road into the grass. So I get the um, the rifle set up. I'm like, okay. So it's time to start putting this thing in motion. So finally, the deer is walking it put his head down to eat. I'm like, okay, be patient. I'm shaking. My hands are shaking. I feel like I'm breathing like a 500-pound person. The deer is eating, and finally it put its head down. I said, okay, either you're going to shoot it now or you're going to miss it. So in my opinion, I felt like the deer was turned too far away from me, like that I didn't, I feel like I didn't have a good shot. Mm-hmm. So finally it kind of turned, it 
front part to the left a little bit, kind of at a diagonal, and it continued to eat. So I said, all right, see, now or never. So I, I pulled the trigger, and he dropped. I said, oh, mm. my God, I said you did it. Mm. So it dropped, and its front leg kept, like, going up and down. I said, Lord, please don't let this deer get up. Just let me have it. Just let me have this one. So finally, he just laid there, and I said, Dad, I dropped him. And he said, like, it's down? Like, you can see it? I said, yeah, I'm looking right at it. He's like, I'm on the way. And I'm like, all right, Sid, you did this. That's good. You did it, girl. <laughs> so then, um, I'm see, when, after I shoot it and I know it's down, I'm like, okay, clean up. So then he texts me and goes, uh, put the scope back on so that if it gets up, you can shoot it again. So I'm like, oh, Lord, got to put the magazine back in here, chamber another round. And so finally, he's walking up on it, and I see him. And he walked up on it, and he was like, you good? So I'm like, yes, I got it. <laughs> so I'm like throwing the stuff down to him like, here, hurry so I can get out of here. And then I finally walk up on it, and I said, that's a good shot. That um, buck had a hole in the side of it. I said, okay, Sid, now you, you're a real hunter now. <laughs> <laughs> Where was he at? Cause you, so you were basically in the blind by yourself. I was in the. Um, if you say you've been out there, it was the primary one skin, so yep. the deer skin um, on the plot, and he was at primary two of my mom because she was bow hunting. Okay, okay. And we okay. probably have been out there maybe an hour. Oh wow! Since we had, I got in the stand and got situated, and so we walked up on it, and I'm. You know, I'm skipping, dancing, smiling. <laughs> I'm like, I'll drag this one out by myself. So did was you able to drag it out by yourself? Yeah, no. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I, I tried. I, I see I seen the pictures of it and that was a, a, a damn fine buck. So if I would have been very impressed if you would have got that one out by yourself. Yeah, no, that wasn't happening. So I'm pulling I'm like, Dad, he still got corn in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> wow so now that you got two hogs and a buck on your resume you know what's the next thing right go hunting yep have See, you <laughs> have y'all had conversations about that yet we um so my bow of course is pink camo of course it is why would and what so other color would it be <laughs> That's that's the way I feel about it. It's not pink. It's not real hunting equipment. <laughs> okay. So my dad takes me to the range and everything, and I like bow hunting because, I, to me personally, it does take skill yep. to bow hunt, but I just have to, I feel like I don't practice enough, so my strength with it, to me, is not where it needs to be. Right. Right. And it, and that, at the end of the day, that's what you want. You want to be comfortable. Like, you know, I wouldn't be comfortable rifle hunting because I don't shoot rifles. The only, you know, really experience I have with shooting guns is a shotgun. You know, I would not shoot my shotgun, you know, when I go duck hunting or goose hunting or whatever. But, you know, deer, hogs, um, some turkey. Sometimes I take my shotgun turkey hunting, but for the most part, deer, hog, turkeys are with a bow. Um, so I wouldn't feel really comfortable, you know, shooting deer or shooting a hog with a rifle. Um, and then at the end of the day, it's all about comfortability. You want to be, you want to have the weapon that you're most comfortable with. So when that time comes and the moment comes, you can, you know, make a clean, effective kill. So again, I totally get where you're coming from. And then I know my mom, she was hunting too. So I'm like, Dang, she's bow hunting. I'm rifle hunting. I just shot this deer. So now I know all the deer are gone because they done heard this shot. So I'm like, just hope, you know, cross your fingers that maybe another deer will just come over there to her. And now we we letting two bucks to the processor. And the processor part, that's my favorite part of hunting, I will say. Is to get <laughs> getting into the process and putting the tag on it and everything. Yes, because when we pulled up this last time, Usually it's people there, but it's never this many people at the process. So I'm like, okay, got my first book. You know, I'm 23, young African-American female. You know, let me go in here and, you know, strut my stuff a little bit. Right. So my dad backs the truck in, and then um, another truck pulled in beside us. And so he, we took off the tarp from my, from my book, and the guy goes, you know, uh, I don't even want to show y'all mine. 
So I'm like, all right, Sage, you did a good job. So finally, you know, we're getting it off the truck and dragging it into the um into the processor. And all these older guys are like, uh, that's yours, man? And he's like, no, that's my daughter's butt. And they're like, you? And I'm like, yeah, me, I did that. <laughs> Great, great uh, sense of pride when you were able to stick your chest out and be like, yep, I'm the one that got that, though. And I'm like, yeah, this is my first one, too. And then another truck pulled up. It was this young little white kid, and he's like, that's your first book? And I was like, yeah, my time to get blooded up. I said, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> he talking about why. I said, because that's nasty. And then there was blood on my, oh, on my outfit. God. I said, I need a napkin. He's talking about just wipe it on some grass. I said, on the grass. <laughs> that is nasty. <laughs> Did you really say, I don't want to get blood on my outfit? <laughs> That's awful. <sighs> well, I will tell you this. What I like and what I appreciate about you is you are authentic and I really <laughs> I I enjoy that and if you were I would say my unsolicited advice like you know advice that you really ain't asking me for um <laughs> continue to just be yourself and have fun and enjoy you know, these hunts, especially with your dad or as you get older, maybe you'll go, you know, more by yourself or whatever. Just continue to enjoy it. You see so much BS these days, even on social media and out of social media. You know, everybody always wants to, like, slam social media or whatever. But, you know, you just see so much crap about, well, if you don't do it this way, then you're not a real hunter. Or if you don't you know, hunt public land or you don't do it yourself or if you use a a guide or if you wear cam or you wear pink camo or you don't mm -hmm. wear, you know, this brand of camo or this brand is junk and all this stuff. It's just so much freaking noise and just straight up bullshit that is uh, around and out. It is really refreshing to see someone who is just like, this is me. I enjoy hunting. This is the way I prefer to hunt. This is how I do it. And I don't really care what anybody else thinks about it. It's really refreshing. So I, my hat's off to you, ma'am. Continue to, to do it the way that you're doing it. And much success to you. Thank you, thank you. And I know um, I actually follow a page on Facebook. It's called South Carolina Deer Hunters. And so I got my first book, and I was kind of hesitant. I was like, okay, you know, I don't really want to put it in there because I don't know what people are going to say. And I said, just do it. Sis. So I did it, and I actually got a lot, a whole lot of just positive encouragement. I probably got like 3,000 likes on that picture and probably 400 comments. And it was from older it was a lot of older white males and just older white women, you know, saying, congratulations, you know, we like to see the young kids out here doing it, you know, keep going, don't let anybody tell you, you know, you're not doing it right. And I was really surprised, so I said, okay, this is this is what hunting is like, you know, I like to keep doing it. Yeah, no, definitely, definitely. You, you deserve all the accolades and congratulations because you, you've put in the work, like I said, I, I know how your dad is about doing stuff, and he is definitely, you know, passing that on down to you. Now, some of the, you know, stuff, we're going to get you out there dragging, you know, some hogs and some deer out by yourself. And, you know, maybe uh, maybe once um, I get stuff together down at my place, I'll have all y'all down, and then we can pluck some birds and stuff together, and, and that's that's when you're really fun. Like, yesterday, I was kill, I was uh, cleaning the birds and stuff, and I, I, I plucked them, and then I decided to try to do them whole, because usually I just, like, pluck them and then breast them out, like, cut the breast out and stuff, and just do it like that, but I got uh, whole ducks, so I had to chop the head off, pluck them, clip the wings, clip the feet, cut an incision in them, stick my hand all the way in there, pull out all the uh all the guts and stuff. So we'll get you down, uh get yeah. your get all y'all down to Georgia and then we'll just set up a nice plucking table and we'll go to work. We'll get you <laughs> we'll get it we'll get you get a little blood on your outfit. 
<laughs> I can't. I, I okay. I can. I can supply you with gloves. That that is not a problem. Because full disclosure, when it can, I I did everything barehanded except for the uh, snatching out the guts and everything. I did have on some uh, surgical gloves for that. Because yeah, I'm with you on that one. So yeah, we'll do that. We'll book it. We'll write. We'll. Uh, I will. Next time I go and I get a whole bunch of birds, like I said, once I get everything situated down in Georgia, we'll get y'all and we'll bring the whole family down and we'll just have a nice old uh, plucking and have a big old wildlife cookout, wild game cookout. How about that? Yeah, just remember, just don't forget the gloves. I got you, but we're going to get blood on your outfit. Long as it's that camo and not my good clothes. (laughs) (laughs) We're good. I'll do it. <laughs> so are you going to get a chance to go before you go back to school? Uh, no, I don't think I'm going to go before I go back to school now because the season's coming around to an end. But that deer, I will say, made up for my hog disappointment last Thanksgiving because we were um, – my dad took – my grandpa, my grandfather was here. My dad took me and my grandfather hunting. Mm. And, again, they were over in – my dad was in the blind. My grandfather was in another stand, and I was in the primary one stand. And, honestly, I think I just got really riled up and just not thinking. And I went to shoot a hog and never found it. Oh. So when the next hog season comes around and it's a hog out there limping, I'm going to say, that's my hog. And I'm going to have to come back from my redemption. Well, and the, I'm gonna have to take him out. The good thing about hogs, and this is why I like hog hunting too, is because they're considered a nuisance. You know, you can hunt hogs year round. So mm-hmm. when whenever you, you know, you get ready, you just you know you you tell dad like, look, let, let, it's time for my redemption. Let's go get them. That's my hog, and I will get it. Oof. All right. Strong, <laughs> strong words. Well, before I get you out of here, uh, do you have like your own Instagram uh, and social media pages? Can people follow you or, or does dad still kind of control that for you? <laughs> no, so I have my, I do have my own Instagram, but you know, I like to keep it with the hunting with the marshes. Okay. On Instagram so we can all, you know, get our family thing going on. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Sydney, thank you for taking the time. I've enjoyed sitting here chatting with you. I've got a lot of good takeaways from this. I will not be referring to my hunting clothes as my outfit, but I will (laughs) let you continue to carry that on for the rest of us. Like I said, great job and much success to you. And just keep being who you are. It's awesome. I'm enjoying it. Thank you, and thank you for having me. No problem. We'll do it again soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Brightland. All right. Winding this thing down, 2019, last podcast of the year. I want to thank Sydney Marsh for being my guest this week. I also want to thank everyone who came through who got interviewed, who allowed me to talk to them, who came on, shared their stories, shared their knowledge. Thank you all for making 2019 an awesome year for the Bryantland Country Podcast. Thank you for taking your time to talk to me. I really appreciate it. You guys, the guests, make the podcast. also want to thank the people, everybody that took the time to download, share the podcast, uh, send messages, DMs, emails, give us those ratings, mashing that five-star button, telling five people to tell five more people, all of that. Just a great big thank you to all of y'all. I hope you enjoy your New Year's Eve. By the time you're listening to this, New Year's Eve uh, will be tomorrow uh, by the time this drops. So hope you guys are enjoy. Have a safe New Year's Eve. Be safe out there. Enjoy yourselves. That's you know, that's what I really can tell you. Hopefully there you'll you'll mix in a hunt for those who have deer season still open. Uh maybe you can get the first hunt in on New Year's on January one. But anyway, thank you. Thank you, thank you. I can't say thank you enough. I'm gonna get ready to get on out of here. You guys have a safe and prosperous new year coming up in twenty twenty. Have a safe holiday new year's eve and i'll catch you guys back here next week for another episode 
of the Brian Land Country Podcast. Thanks for listening to the Brian Land Country Podcast, hosted by AB3. Please leave us a positive review and five-star rating on iTunes. Be sure to check out our podcast section on our website, bryantlandcountry.com, for previous podcasts. Check us out on Instagram at Official Bryant Land and Twitter at 3 Bryant Land. This has been an AB3 Media Production. Join us next time for another edition of the Bryant Land Country Podcast.